Hello, I'm Rob. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is one of my first videos, and I'm hoping to produce more videos in the future covering things like electronics, the Arduino, retro, programming, and all sorts of things. For those that don't know, I'm the creator of the Drawbridge solution that allowed you to read real disks on a, a Windows PC. I'm also the guy who managed to get WinUAE running real disks in real time so you can boot from regular Amiga disks on your PC. Today I'm going to show you how I build these drawbridge boards up and it takes a little bit of time. So today I'm going to show you how I build up the drawbridge boards before I send them out. This is how they arrive when I get them. They're uh, all packaged up like this individually, uh, all safe and ready to go. Um, I've got two pieces of heat shrink. There we go. I've got an anti-static label, a piece of cardboard, uh, an anti-static bag, and a USB cable with two ends on it. Uh, cable clips, I print these because I tried to get the official ones and every time I asked for them and ordered them, the wrong type came, so these work out better. Um, a little bit of hot melt glue, and the letter that goes inside the envelope, and the envelope itself. So we start off with the USB cable itself. First thing we have to do is untie it. And we hold on to these, these uh, ties, we use them later. Um, what I do is I use one of these cables, it's about a metre and a half long, um, and I use it to make two boards. So I cut that off. Once I've cut the cable in half, we've got an end like this, and I've got this rather funky tool that I find very useful, and I just clip it under here, run it round once, and that strips the cable back for me, which hopefully I can pull off. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. If not, I'm bending these back like this, cutting the shielding off, because we don't need it, and then pulling the rest off and then we uh, take the cable and tidy it up, like so. Cutting off the excess. Next thing I'm gonna do is attach the uh, cable grip, okay? And the way we do that is I slide it over the, uh, the wires like so. And these took me a while to get right so that they fitted nicely and had a little bit of grip on them, like so. And then um, what we do is we take a bit of this cable grip that we've got here, with the, sorry, the, there, and we cut a little bit off, like so. And then we slide it over the wire, like so, and then slide a bit of glue in the back of it. And then we use a heat gun just to melt it in place and wait for the heat glue to melt as well. There we go, very nice. And then we slide that back up again and let the glue go into the connector like so. And there we have, that's all nicely terminated and ready. Next thing we need to do is prepare the wire. So they should all be roughly the same length. Um, they never are, but cut the bits off. And then I've got this really good tool. This, it's really good for stripping wires. Um, and you can adjust it, you can slide this thing up and down to choose how long and how much it cuts. So um, the two black wires, they're a bit thicker than the green and white. So we'll do those first and put those in and it's a very good tool. And then the green and white wires as well. Sometimes it goes a little bit wrong, but that's fine. Um, next thing we do is just twist them up a little bit. In the background, you can probably hear some humming. That's the uh, solder station that I've got. As the uh, heater kicks in and out, you can hear the humming change. So there we have. Now, before you go any soldering whatsoever, it's always easier if you tin the wires first. Okay, so I have got my roll of solder, here it is, and I have a soldering iron ready to go, and 
I'm going to just gently apply a little bit of solder the ends of these wires just a little bit and I'm not worried about being particularly neat because it doesn't massively matter here we go and the last one okay and as you can see they're a bit messy but it doesn't matter and then we'll just trim the ends off okay so that's all ready to go for when we attach it to the board now comes the board so yeah they arrive like this um a little bit hard to get out but they um they arrive and the the main processor here the 80 mega 328 it doesn't have anything on it no bootloaders nothing so you wouldn't be able to do anything with it inside the arduino um, ide um, this little chip here is your USB to serial converter made by FTDI. Um, nothing on the back really, um, but you'll see what this is all for in a second. You see these connections here, this is for what's called as uh, in-circuit or in-system programming. Um, and this is how you, you, you program the bootloader in the first place. So I built this little rig, it looks like this, where I can put a board in and then I can program it up. So we're going to program this board up um, using this rig that I've got here. These um, Arduinos are programmed with the um, Arduino ISP uh, sketch that you can find in the Arduino IDE. And they're designed to write uh, the program onto something using the connections along the back. Um, normally they're arranged um, as like a three by two sort of pin header, um, which you may have seen, but obviously we don't have room for that on here. So I put that into this, just wait for it to catch back up again. And then to make it easier for me, rather than reaching over to the computer, I've got a little helpful button, which starts the process going. And you can see from the output that it's happily going away programming. Uh, you'll see obviously one of them has failed because there's no board there. And when it completes, hopefully the light will go green. It does say it's finished. There we go. So that board is now programmed, ready to be used. So we can move that out of the way. We don't need that anymore. Next thing we need to do is prepare it. So we don't need these connections anymore. They were just the initial programming. What we do need these four here. What we've got here is we've got ground five volts and USB minus and USB plus. Don't really need to know what they are. It's not really important. Um, we can just put some solder onto these ready to be used. And I bet all that smoke's going straight into the camera. There we go, like so. Now we bring our wire back that we've got from earlier. Now the next thing I need to do is very important. So I've got this heat shrink here, and what I do is I cut a piece off, don't want that bit like that, cut a piece off, say about that big, okay? I'm using transparent because it's cool. Um, and I'm gonna slide that over the wire, okay? Now, the first batch I built, they used black heat shrink, but I'm using transparent so you can see. Some people thought it was so I could cover up the chip so you couldn't see what it was. It's not the reason at all. The reason is, is is to insulate these so they don't short out on the back of the drive once you actually insert the board. So we're going to solder these in place. So colour coding I happen to know quite easily now because I've done this enough times. Ground is obviously black. So we'll just solder that one in place. There we go. There's that one. Oh, I missed last lead base, base solder. And then the 5 volt one. Okay, and then on these wires, the minus is the white wire. There we go. And the green is the plus. So I'll we'll just put that one in there as well. There we go. And then just trim off any excess wires. There we go. And now we tidy the wire up. So what I do is I fold it over like that. So that roughly keeps them all sort of the same length. Slide this over like so. Yeah, there we go. And there we go. Lined up. And then finally use the heat gun again to heat shrink it closed. There we go. And this holds the wire in place as well. So that's quite useful. It stops it being yanked out too easily. There we go. And that one's ready for testing. Now, I could plug this into a board and run the diagnostics tool. Um, but when you're building up hundreds of these, that takes far too long. So I've actually got, and I'll just bring it into range, I've got a rather hacked together Arduino Uno, which has a special sketch on it. And a very long ribbon cable, which I'm going to connect up to it. 
to the board now. Like so. I'm done. I'm going to plug the USB in as well, and you should hopefully hear it. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. There we go. It's been found. And then I've got a little button off to the side here, which I'll just press to trigger it, so I don't have to get back up to the computer every time and press this. And it should start the testing process. It usually fails the first time, and that's just because the board hasn't initialized yet. And then off it goes. Look. And this exercises and runs through a whole load of uh, things that the board can do. So, for example, it pretends it's reading and writing, and the Arduino Uno in the corner is pretending to be a floppy drive. And this just makes the whole thing much, much quicker for me to test. And as you can see, that one completely passed, so this board's ready to go. So what I do next, I move the board, and then we need to coil the cable up so I can package it. And this is how I've been doing that. And then using the um, cable grip, uh, cable ties that came off earlier, and then tie it in place. Okay, and then using the nice bags we've got, these are meant for hard disks, so convenient size. Slide all that into here. There isn't a massive risk of static, these chips are quite resilient. Um, and also the fact that there's a bit of plastic around there as well helps. Um, but it's always good to take precautions. You can't see, but off camera I've got anti-static strap. So we'll stick this on here, like so. Okay. And then that's how they come when you get them. Um, but what actually happens is you get a letter, it looks a bit like this, which I've folded up. Like so. And then I took this inside the letter like that. And then I also put a piece of cardboard in just for padding, just a little bit of extra strength. And then some envelopes I ordered that were far too big. It goes inside, peel it off and seal it up. And there we go. And that'll go straight ready for um, the next person on the waiting list. See, it takes a little bit of time to do, but it's well worth it. And once you get into the rhythm of these, I tend to build them up as 10 at a time. So as you can see, it takes me a little bit of time to build these drawbridge boards. That's why I only build 10 a day and then release them onto my waiting list. If you like this video, then please give me a big thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and support me on Patreon. And then I can continue making new videos about electronics, Arduino, programming and much more. Thank you for your time today and I'll see you again soon.